Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the video. Aaron Bennett here. I'm going to dive into the latest crypto news, what's going on in the world of cryptocurrency. And I want to start out really by going over what's going on with this whole China FUD. And uh, 19 separate occasions has China basically banned crypto. So I'm going to be covering that. Then taking a look at FTX and why they're moving to another country having to do with all of this crackdown in China and how the US could actually be doing the same thing that China's doing, basically pushing developers outside of the country. So next, I want to talk about this groundbreaking story. You can send Bitcoin as tips inside of Twitter and going over Jack Mahler's company Strike, which allows this to be possible. Then I'm going to play for you a clip from a Max Kaiser interview probably eight years ago when the price of Bitcoin was 50 bucks, basically saying, hey, the price of Bitcoin can go to 100 grand. I think it's amazing that he said that so long ago. And then finishing off from a tweet from Willy Wu talking about what's going on with the buyers of Bitcoin, as he calls the Rick Astley's, and then just summing up what's going on chain with Bitcoin. So if you're not already uh, subscribed to my station, I'm putting out these videos all the time, giving you guys the latest news, and there will be timestamps below. So if you want to fast forward to a specific story, you can do so. And also go ahead and follow me on Twitter as well. Link below for that. All right, guys, so diving into the first story, talking about this China FUD, which caused this latest dip in Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin rallied back up to around 45,000, and then we saw this dip down to like 41 in like a day. Kind of crazy. So just to summarize, and this is a good story if you want to read about every single time China has created some FUD about Bitcoin. It started 12 years ago, 2009. They banned virtual currencies for the first time. In 2013, they prevented Chinese financial institutions from handling Bitcoin transactions and called crypto a currency without real meaning. Next, take a look in 2014. In March, there was a fake news story. Also in 2014, they caused the price of Bitcoin to fall from 709 to 346. And in 2016, a Chinese exchange hack briefly tanked the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin. So this was the exchange Bitfinex out of Hong Kong, which is actually still around today. These attackers stole roughly 119,000 Bitcoin worth more than $5 billion at the time. Obviously now way more than $5 billion. Now heading into 2017. So in September, China's government officially banned exchanges from servicing users within the country. Then later in 2017, they claimed Bitcoin's body would float down the river, basically threatening anybody who's involved with Bitcoin. In 2018, reports circulated that Chinese nationals may have caused a crash in major cryptocurrency prices. And then in 2019, they were considering banning mining in the country again. And 2020, the March 2020 COVID crash, crypto bloodbath, it was believed that this was largely caused by Chinese miners liquidating their holdings. So now we are in 2021. We saw what happened in May of this year. There was a crash because of China. Then we saw the Bank of China ordering mobile payment service providers not to provide banking and settlement services to clients engaged in crypto. Then in June, officials issued a bona fide mining ban. We saw that mining hash power move out of China. And this brings us to a few days ago, once again, declaring that all crypto transactions in China are illegal. So the number of times China FUD has failed to kill crypto 19 times. And it's important to note that each time that China uh, comes out with one of these stories, the price of Bitcoin actually goes down less than it did before. So the market is less reactive or the market just doesn't care as much about China FUD regarding Bitcoin. So all in all, this is good news. If we can get China out of Bitcoin, if that's the decision they want to do, if they want to have full control over their people and have full surveillance, which is what they want to do, realizing that Bitcoin is a threat against full totalitarian control, uh, you know, if that's where they're going, then so be it. Uh, but every time they try to kill it, basically, the price of Bitcoin just does not care. So the next story really quick talking about FTX moving operations to the Bahamas as part of a headquarters shift. And they're doing this because the Chinese government continues to crack down on crypto and FTX could face regulatory uncertainty in the future, despite Hong Kong's previously favorable environment. The Bahamas, on the other hand, has a framework for crypto firms already in place. So this is basically what's going to happen if there are more and more crackdowns. 
it doesn't kill Bitcoin. So basically the story is a government cracking down on Bitcoin isn't going to kill it. People are just going to move their companies outside of these jurisdictions. So the next story, which is huge, it's really amazing what this is going to do. Basically, you can tip people on Twitter using Bitcoin. Now, you can do this through your mobile app. I think you have to be on Android right now. I know for mine, it doesn't work, I think because I'm uh, on the Apple iOS platform, but this is gonna be huge. And uh, you know, allowing basically everybody with a phone to instantly send Bitcoin to each other using the Lightning Network instantly. But if you do wanna hear more about this uh, from the CEO's mouth, you can check out uh, Power Lunch, or you know what, I'm just gonna retweet this. You can find it on my Twitter. So I wanna take a look at this freaking amazing interview by Max Kaiser he did forever ago whenever Bitcoin was $50. Uh, let's take a look. This is drawing attention to Bitcoin, which is now a $400 million market, and it has room to become one, two, five, ten percent of the global Forex market. So that Bitcoin price, which last year was at four dollars, which is currently trading almost at fifty dollars, if it captures 10% of the global market, you could see Bitcoins trading for $100,000 of Bitcoin, a million dollars of Bitcoin. Amazing, right? So, <laughs> you know, 10 years ago or whenever, basically saying Bitcoin can trade for $100,000 or a million dollars. Now, these are things that people are talking about now because a million dollar Bitcoin is a 20x from now. A $100,000 Bitcoin is a 2x in price. Very, very achievable. I'm going to retweet this as well, uh, just so you guys can check it out. So next story, take a look at uh, Willy Woo's Twitter and take a look at what long-term buyers are doing. Basically, this is kind of a confusing chart, but it's showing that the Rick Astleys, which are the people that are long-term hodlers, big whales in Bitcoin, that's what he calls them. Basically, we are about to see an explosion in the price of Bitcoin. He's expecting Bitcoin to retest that $50,000, $60,000 mark. Uh, he's seeing long-term hodlers accumulate. He's seeing more Bitcoin flow to long-term investors, which is really, really bullish. And he's not seeing signs, at least he's not posting signs that we are going to head into a bear market. He's seeing another rally definitely in the works. Now, could he be lying? Like, could he be front running and then all of a sudden say, oh, it's, you know, it's a bear market coming? Like, yeah, sure. Like, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know this guy. I don't know if he's like always telling the truth. But what he's telling everybody is we're going to see another big rally, guys. So take a look at the prices just to finish off this video. Refresh it. Market cap under 2 trillion and uh, not much movement today. I think most people are just waiting to see which direction Bitcoin really breaks out. Like, are we going to jump past fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars, or are we going to retest, you know, in the mid to low thirties potentially? I mean, that would suck, but I mean, it can happen. In the meantime, though, I mean, there are just some great projects doing great things. Kusama, Avalanche. We are seeing things from Polkadot. We are seeing a lot from Cardano. So we are seeing great projects continue to innovate, and that's. One of the most important things to remember is that the price reflects what's going on in the market. It doesn't directly reflect the innovations happening with these projects, which if you're an investor, if you're buying these coins, you want to know exactly what you're buying and what are they doing? You know, are they actually innovating? Are they actually getting better? So I will be making more videos on retiring with crypto, finding some ways to create passive income with crypto and all that. I will be making a lot more videos on that. If you guys have any guests that are really, really smart in this area that you want me to interview or talk to live, or make a video with, let me know, hit me up, always up for ideas. Uh, what I'm doing, again, every single week, Celsius Network has given me uh, new coins. It's my dollar cost average plan. And I'm also using my fold card all the time to stack sets. So even if you don't buy anything, if you just have this card in the app, um, you just swipe it every single day, or not swipe it, you spin the wheel, and you can get you know, up to thousands of sats. Usually it's like, I don't know, 500 sats a day is like a bonus. A lot of things I'm doing just right now, while the price of Bitcoin is kind of fluctuating, not really doing much, just to add to my position. Because at the end of the day, you want to have more coins than when you started, right? Like in five years from now, you want to have more of the good projects than you do right now. That is literally the goal of what we're trying to do. So what are the strategies of doing that? One is definitely staking your coins and getting those passive yields. Another is doing things like using uh, a card like the Fold App card where you can, let me get that to Zoom, where you can stack sats that way, guys. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.